If you listen to the words of the attackers themselves, it's clear that they wished to bring uh, the war which they saw prosecuted on the streets of Baghdad and Kabul to the streets of London. But speaking at a press conference, London Mayor Boris Johnson echoed many senior political figures by trying to distance this latest act of violence from the UK's recent overseas exploits. This is not a question now of uh, blaming the religion of Islam. It is certainly not a question of blaming any aspect of British foreign policy or what uh, British our troops uh, are do in operations abroad when they risk our lives uh, for, on behalf of all of us. The London mayor in charge at the time of the London 2005 bombings disagrees. They are lying. They are completely complicit with the United States policy, just like Tony Blair was um, with George Bush. Um, they aren't prepared to stand out and say, well, we think this strategy has been a disaster. And it has been a disaster, not just for the, the young man killed um, on the streets of London, but for the hundreds of thousands of um, uh, people in Afghanistan and in Iraq who've been killed. They the simple reality is if you invade other people's countries, there will be a comeback. Well, let's now get the views of Lindsay German from the Stop the War Coalition on the London Machete murder. Um, thank you very much for joining us. How much should we blame the British government foreign policy uh, for this attack? Well, this was obviously a horrific attack and one that shocked lots and lots of people here in, in Britain. But I think we should listen to the words of the perpetrators themselves, who very, very clearly linked it with the wars abroad. And we don't just have to take their word for it. We should also take the word of the British security services, who for getting on for 10 years now have been saying that the wars abroad will make terrorism much more likely here in Britain. We saw that first in 2005 with the London bombings. We've had a number of more minor incidents, but now we've seen it again with this killing of a soldier. And, uh, and I think it is very, very directly connected to things. And the fact that the government and the mayor of London won't acknowledge this, I think is really a continuation of, of a view and a policy which simply is carrying on with these wars in the face of all uh, recognition that actually these wars have not succeeded in doing anything, let alone getting rid of terrorism. Why do you think it's only now, it appears to be anyway, that we are seeing these sort of lone wolf attacks? That's how they're being labelled at the moment, when we do know that British military action has been in existence for, for, for the best part of a decade abroad. So why haven't we seen this sort of um, attack before? Well, it, it's been going on for 12 years now, since the uh, nearly 12 years since the invasion of Afghanistan, and as you say, 10 years since the invasion of Iraq. I think that the the first attacks actually took place just after Tony Blair was re-elected in 2005, the week that the G8 leaders were meeting in Scotland. And I think it, that bombing in 2005 was clearly connected to it. But I think what's going on now is that these wars are very much ignored by lots of the media for most of the time. There are a very great sense of grievance to many, many people in this country. There's a very strong uh, opposition to the war, according to opinion polls, uh, across all parts of the uh, community, and particularly among uh, working people in, in Britain. And I think these wars have dragged on. There are still many people being killed. There are people being killed by drones in Pakistan and Yemen. Uh, the war has spread. There's intervention in Syria. It's in Mali. It's now spread to Africa as well as to parts of the Middle East and South Asia. So I think what's happening is that people oppose these wars, and unfortunately a small number of people see these kind of actions as somehow uh, a way of dealing with them. I disagree with that very much um, in terms of what should be done to oppose these wars. I believe in opposing them through campaigning, through demonstrating, but I think it is a sense of the frustration that people feel, and they feel as well that Muslims are being more and more demonised in this country and elsewhere in Europe, and, uh, and this is one of the responses that people have.